Well, in Memphis, the, the big barbecue dispute is over whether ribs should be wet or dry. The dry rib goes on with a, a seasoning rub. Sauce is served on the side. The wet rib is one that's basted with sauce towards the end of cooking, glazed, and sometimes almost marinated again in the sauce so that it's really sticky and gooey and just runs down to your elbow. While the choice between wet or dry might seem like a minor dispute to most of us, in Memphis, reputations rise and fall on it. This is a city where barbecue is a serious affair. What makes the competition between the wet and the dry barbecue so special is the fact that we love our barbecue so much, you have to have an option. This nondescript alley is the home of Rendezvous, the center of the dry rib universe. It's a little hard to find, but even tourists can tell you how to get there. That's how famous it is. We live in Dallas, but we drove all the way up to have the Memphis barbecue. This has been great here at Rendezvous. I think that these might be the best I've had. It might not look it, but Rendezvous is huge. It'll hold a thousand people, and often does. On a busy Saturday night, we'll feed close to, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 people. We probably sell three and a half tons of ribs a week, and we're only open five days, and we're only open for lunch two days, so it's a pretty busy. That's why I say we kind of slap ourselves and think, where is this business coming from? Elvis used to have these ribs delivered to Graceland, and among the regulars today are the Rolling Stones, Although John Virgos's dad, who founded the place 55 years ago, didn't exactly roll out the red carpet the first time they came in. 1964, they were pretty raggedy looking. It was quite a shock to the South. And my dad was going to ask the Rolling Stones to leave. They've always gotten a kick out of it. And every time they come to Memphis, they always come to the rendezvous. And it's not just musicians who eat here. Politicians crave the stuff, too. Well, I've had the chance to go aboard Air Force One four times, and I've waited on the, the President Clinton, and I've had the Vice President Al Gore, and uh, I've been to Washington, D.C. with them, and I can sit here for two hours and name names. This, this guy's been coming in here for how long, Keith? Uh, this was, uh, 30 36, 37 years now. And he still didn't know how to eat the ribs. He's pulling them from the wrong side, and he should know that you should pull them on the part that's been cut. Now here's the deal on the ribs. They call them dry, but they're really not. They may not be cooked with sauce on them, but once they're done, which takes about two hours, they're basted with a vinegar solution and then coated with a secret recipe of dry spices. But they're still plenty juicy underneath. Some people think because you got good sauce, you can have turbo meat, but that don't make it. So we try to use quality meat, which we use the loin ribs. And we use basically a dry season on it, but sauce is always available. I notice there's a touch of cinnamon or some nutmeg, something that gives it a very unique flavor. They're real spicy and they got a lot of kick to them, and it's real good. Some fans of the spicy mixture have even found other uses for it. I put it on popcorn, I put it on hamburgers, I put it on steak, I put it on chicken. It actually, I don't know what's in it, and I'm sure that I probably don't want to know what's in it, but it tastes good on everything that you sprinkle it on. 